Oh, what are you saying? What are you saying? You're married? No, I'm separated. But still married. That's, that's, that's a technicality. that y'all love to see me stressed this was a highly requested recap and after watching this movie i see why now i haven't watched this movie since it premiered on hbo back in the day so while i watched this film child i've never cussed at a tv so much i was flabbergasted at the sheer audacity of these two because how many red flags do you need and it started early with this being said while watching this movie, I noticed too many things and I have my thoughts. But before we get to that, it's time to talk about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. As someone who is currently in therapy and seeing the benefits of having a safe space to talk through my issues, I can honestly say I am so happy that I did. For the longest, I knew therapy was an option, but I was so scared of reopening old wounds or better yet, finding out that in certain situations, I was very much the problem. But therapy has helped me learn so much about myself, including that I have social anxiety. I've learned where it comes from, how to spot my triggers, and better ways to manage them so I don't continue overthinking, isolating, and other unproductive habits. With BetterHelp, an online therapy platform, you too can have a safe space to work through your own experiences guided by a licensed therapist. To get started, just select the link in the description box below or visit betterhelp.com slash nostalgia. After a quick questionnaire, you'll be matched with a therapist in 48 hours or less. BetterHelp makes it easy to schedule sessions that fit your needs, whether you prefer phone, video, or chat. And if your therapist isn't quite the right fit, you can switch to a new one at no extra cost. If you're ready to see how therapy could help you, click the link below or go to betterhelp.com slash nostalgia to get 10% off your first month. Now, on to this recap. Let's get into it. As the movie starts, we meet one of our main characters, Zora, as she prepares to move into her new place in Brooklyn. Listen, Sanaa loves a good Brooklyn apartment. I swear this is the fourth movie I've seen where she's in the same apartment. But anyway, as she arrives at her new place, she meets our other main character, Franklin. Franklin, who was the reason why her floors weren't dry in time for her move in, informed her that her floors wouldn't be dry for another hour. This put her in a bind since the moving guys were not trying to hang around for another hour, forcing her to ask Franklin to move her things in. And of course, he agreed to for a small fee. They get to know each other a little bit as they move her items in. He learned her name, learned that she was a singer, and even asked her to sing for him, but she wasn't in a singing mood, and Franklin wasted no time digging for more info. Yeah, so I guess you, uh, you're gonna get your man to help you with all of your stuff, right? Franklin volunteers to help her finish unpacking the next day since she was tired, and she agrees and accepts the help. The next morning, as Franklin arrived back at the same brownstone that he worked at, also the same one that Zora lived in, his boss, Vinny, told him that he didn't have any work for him and would let him know what he did. Along with Zora being a singer, she was also a music teacher at a local school. Since Franklin had plenty of time on his hands, he went to a bar to chat with his friend, Jimmy. Jimmy had a gambling problem and didn't feel any shame in begging Franklin for some money to feed his habit, and Franklin reluctantly gave it to him. While he was busy chatting it up with his homeboy, he forgot about his commitment to help Zora unpack at six. She eventually got tired of waiting on him and went to grab a bite to eat. After she got her food, she just so happened to run into Franklin, clearly upset. Zora no longer wanted his help, but of course, Franklin swooned his way right back into her good graces and her apartment. As he helped her unpack and fix up a few things in her apartment, he quietly observed her. As they talked, Zora revealed that she had a piano on Lilway, but she only had $200 left to pay. One thing I noticed about Franklin was that he asked a lot of questions and pretty much revealed the bare minimum about himself. This was a red flag, cause why are you trying to learn me so tough and revealing nothing about yourself? I have a theory about this. I'll save it for the final thoughts. 
Franklin does reveal that he wants to get a contract to restore brownstones. Clearly, it was something he was passionate about. Their night was cut short when Zora's dad called and she told Franklin he had to leave, but she promised to invite him over once she settled into her new apartment. Franklin questioned how she planned to do this if she didn't have his number, but Zora insisted that she find a way. We meet Zora's friends, Claudette and Portia. Zora tells them about Franklin and this quickly turns into a conversation about dating a man that has the potential to take care of you. Claudette, who was a lawyer married to an investment banker, judged Portia heavy for requiring a man to have the ability to pay her bills or buy her jewelry. But it was pretty ironic that she made it seem like Portia was asking for too much when she married up herself and reaped the benefits of that. Zora tells them that she doesn't care to date the typical suit and tie guys because they expect their ability to provide material things to excuse them from their bad behavior. Their conversation quickly shifts to Portia asking Zora if she contacted Reg, a guy that she knew who agreed to help Zora with her music. Zora was taking her sweet time trying to perfect her music, but Portia told her to put a little pep in her step. You know what I had to do to get you that number? No, but we can imagine. When Zora returned home, she had an unexpected visitor waiting for her, and of course, she let him in, and baby Franklin got right to it. Hemmed her up right by the fridge, and they, well. Yeah. It's been a hot minute since we've used this, huh? After they get through doing the two, Franklin tried to get her to sing to him. She dodged his ask. Franklin revealed that initially, he didn't want to date anyone until he got his business off the ground. But since meeting Zora, he wondered why they couldn't or shouldn't do both date each other and pursue their dreams. He warned Zora that if she's looking for a man with money, he wasn't the one. I can't hug and kiss a bank account, Franklin. But the shit comes in handy, okay? Especially in this economy. We get a montage of them getting closer and spending time. Franklin meets up with Jimmy at the bar and Jimmy surprised him by paying him back with a little interest added on top, $400 to be exact. Franklin took $200 and got Zora's piano out of Lelway, which was a really sweet gesture. And to thank him, she finally sang for him. Zora finally felt ready enough to reach out to Reg. She auditioned for him and he liked what he heard and agreed to work with her for the Lolo. And things were going too well. And of course, it was time for Franklin to drop the bombs, plural. He'd previously told Zora that he went to college, but homeboy dropped out of high school. He had two kids, two boys, and wait, there was more. He was still married. What, what are you saying? What are you saying, you're married? No, I'm separated. But still married. That's, that's, that's a technicality. Same thing, homeboy. You've been lying to me this whole time. See, I ain't lying to you. I just didn't tell you right away. <laughs> Child. Zora asked him why he never got a divorce, and Franklin told her he couldn't afford one. When Zora doesn't fall for his excuse, Franklin turns it around on her. See, you want an excuse? You got it, All right? There's your excuse. This was not an excuse. These were valid reasons, my guy. Franklin left, and Zora immediately got lonely and started to regret their separation. She finally talked to him when she saw him working in front of her apartment. She admitted that she wouldn't have given him the time of day if he'd been upfront with her, but she was willing to look past his faults, and there were a lot of faults. The sex must have been bomb. It, it had to have been. Zora agreed to meet his kids and even offered to let him move in. Zora, I mean, like, your rent is just kind of steep. You know, I got the boys, I got this job situation. I'm... He already telling her what he can't do, and he hasn't even moved in yet. This was a home run for Franklin, honestly, and Zora didn't know what she was getting herself into. She did, but she was in la-la land, and the D had her woozy child. Anyway, she meets the kids. The youngest liked her. The oldest, not so much. We get another montage of them living together, getting even closer, and well, more. Yeah. One night as they were sleeping, Zora had a seizure. It turns out she had epilepsy and didn't tell Franklin. Zora was scared to tell him about her condition, but Franklin insisted that it wasn't going to scare him away. Sometime after, Franklin quits his job after Vinny runs out of work for him to do again. 
He tells Vinny to never call him again. Zora and Franklin had dinner with Claudette and her husband. The dinner starts off shaky due to Franklin's attitude over the loss of his job, his insecurities, and clear irritation at Zora. Claudette's husband brings up Jazz and Franklin starts going on about how Jazz doesn't appeal to regular black people and their struggles, which quickly turned them off. After they leave Claudette's, Franklin complains about Zora trying to dress him up to meet her friends and how she jumped in to prevent him from saying something silly during conversation. Zora insisted she just wanted him to look good and he wasn't there serious, but Franklin and his ego was on one. He finally tells her that he lost his job with Vinny and Zora told him to join the union, but Franklin had all the excuses in the world. I'm working, I gotta give every penny to Pam because I'm usually behind from not working. And take the contractor's license exam because you gotta have a GED. Can't go to night school because I don't know what my eye was gonna be. Again, Zora saves him by telling him she'd cover the bills while he goes back to school. And he loved hearing that shit. I hear you, baby. <laughs> That's peace. Mm -hmm. That's real peace right now. And he thanks her. Bye. <laughs> well. Yeah. Yep. Gave her some D. Because that's all he's got to give at this point. Zora meets back with Reg and he tells her that he has access to Sony Studios. He plans to sneak her in and record some records there. Sometime later, Zora meets Franklin's parents and this meeting was so telling. Zora told Franklin's family that he planned to go back to school and start his own business and their reactions. Actually, Franklin's gonna go back to school and start his own business. Doing what? Takes a whole lot of money to start a new business. My baby's gonna find a way. You just watch. Anytime a man's own mama dismisses him like this, it's a huge red flag. That means he has messed up so many times that even his own mama doesn't believe in his ass. And we know that some mamas love to cape for their sons, so he had to have been on some mess. But poor Zora, she was there to lift his ego one more time, but she will soon learn why his family responded the way that they did. Zora slowly starts to feel the financial strain of carrying their household, and if things couldn't get worse, she finds out that she's pregnant. She tells Portia and Claudette first, Claudette insisted that she tell Franklin, and Portia reminded Zora that it was her body and her choice. You love him, don't you? <laughs> yes, I love him. You'd marry him if he asked you to, wouldn't you? But the truth is, he hasn't asked you, Zora. And until there's a rock on your finger, there are no guarantees. None. I'm with Portia on this, and Claudette confuses me, because she more than likely wouldn't even allow herself to be in this type of situation with her investment banker husband, but she's encouraging Zora to be even more reckless. Zora considers having an abortion. She tried to dodge Franklin's advances by telling him she had an infection, but he picked up on her game real quick. What do you think? I don't know when your period start. Don't kill my baby, Zora. Zora reminds him that he's still very much a married man. We're not married. We, you don't even have your divorce. I can get the divorce before the baby's born. But he doesn't even have a job. And remember, he said he couldn't even afford a divorce. He continues to beg for her to keep the baby. And I, I promise you, I will bust my ass if, if I have to work three jobs to take care of y'all. You're not even doing that now for the two kids you already got. Franklin puts some pep in his step and finds some work. Meanwhile, Zora broke the news to Reg, who was understandably pissed. He already knew that her having that baby would be the downfall of his investment in her and their songs. He warned her that if she counseled with him once, he was done. Franklin was so excited to tell Zora about his new job, but Zora was stressed and too tired to stay up and celebrate. We get another montage of Zora continuing to work on her music, Franklin starting to feel neglected since Zora was dedicating so much time to her music. Zora begs for him to let her focus on the song since she was feeling insecure about it. Plus, she was set to record it later that night. He doesn't do that. He instead starts complaining about how she doesn't pay him any attention. There's some women out there be dying to have a man. And here you are acting like you can't be bothered. I need to thank my maker I have a man. Well, I'm not like all these other desperate... What? Desperate what? 
Franklin eventually shows up to support Zora as she records her demo. And just when things were starting to level out, Franklin forgets that there are certain privileges he doesn't have and he loses his job for drinking on the clock and getting hurt. Why would you drink on one of the most dangerous jobs you could have? Why would you think that's okay? But of course, he didn't take responsibility for his actions at all. When Zora brings up the money he told her he'd been saving for his divorce and possibly using that to carry them over, child, he told her that all $122 was there for her to use. That's all he'd managed to save and they had a baby on the way. Franklin goes to his ex-wife Pam's house to beg her to take it easy on him. In other words, allow him to not help her with their son's needs. I love how she sits him straight after he tries to turn it around on her. Did I ever take your ass to court and ask you for 25% whether you had it or not? And did I ever get a thank you? Well, have a call me. I tell a girl a big dick ain't worth all the stress. Zora will soon learn this for herself. We fast forward to Zora's birthday. Franklin planned to take Zora to see Shaka Khan. When they arrive at the venue, a guy offered to sell them floor seats. Franklin had purchased balcony seats, but of course, Zora wanted to be closer to the stage, so she bought the floor seats from the guy. And you already know Franklin did not like this. He took this as Zora being unappreciative of what he'd done. It seemed like whenever she had a big thing coming up, or when attention needed to be on her, he found a way to bring attention back to himself. Personally, I would have let him have his meltdown and I would have enjoyed Miss Shaka Khan and had a grand old time. Zora finally has the baby. It was a boy and she named him Jeremiah. Franklin met Zora's dad and he gave Franklin a pep talk to motivate him to take care of his family. With the birth of the baby, Zora had little time to work on her music, and with Franklin still out of work, she had to continue to carry the financial weight of their family. Franklin stopped by Vinny's work site, but his ego prevented him from outright asking him for a job. Franklin doesn't even show up to pick up the baby from daycare, which forced Zora to leave work and pick their son up. This was yet another thing that slipped through the cracks for Franklin. He's home, not looking for work because it's too cold he had nothing but time to clean up and pick up jeremiah but all he wanted to do was lay on the couch and do absolutely nothing yo i think he needs changing he's wet absolutely nothing look zora i just need a little second you know like to clear my head you know what i'm saying Zora reminds Franklin to take his dad up on his offer to put in a good word for him at his job, but Franklin acts as if she's asking him to work for free. And if things couldn't get worse, Reg finally pulled the plug on working with Zora since her new life as a mom had hindered their creative process like he knew it would. At this point, Zora was pissed, as she should have been, and didn't care to talk to Franklin. She did have the energy to talk to her friends, though, which really pissed Franklin and his ego off, and this argument turns into Zora finally expressing her frustration. It's always about you and your fucking demo. My what about some of the shit you used to talk about? Getting your GED, starting no, your own I, business, I know what I said. getting no, your contracting you license. You beat me over the head with this yeah, shit. No, that no, ain't you're helping talking me. talking about have to. Why don't you try to be a little bit more supportive? Supportive? What you need me for, Zora? I don't know. And Zora finally got to the point where even the D wasn't enough to stay in this mess they called a relationship. Because after they're done doing the do, the problems are still there. And it was a wrap, and Franklin was mad about it and did some predictable F-boy shit, destroying things he didn't work hard for. Honestly, I needed Claudette to be here to see this because she was capable for him real tough the entire time, knowing damn well she would never. But anyway, time goes by. Franklin finally gets the motivation to get that GED. Funny how that became a priority way after the fact, after he no longer had the space and opportunity that Zora afforded him. Zora settles into life as a single mom. She continues working on her music and eventually becomes a songwriter. Franklin showed up a year later to see Jeremiah and Zora. He tells Zora that he's about to take his contracting exam and now has his GED. She tells him about one of her songs being on the radio. Now that we aren't together, we finally got our shit together. It's almost like y'all should have never been together in the first place. Oh, and Franklin finally got that divorce too. 
As Franklin leaves out, he reminds her that his love for her was always real. Before he gets to the street, she stops him and challenges him to another game of Scrabble and they go upstairs to play. And this is pretty much the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. Franklin and Zora should have never got together. If anything, they should have kept it on an F buddy level because the amount of red flags between the both of them was just too many to ignore. They moved way too fast and got swept up in their lust for one another. Franklin was intentionally trying to learn Zora from day one, asking her if she lived with someone, trying to push himself into her place, asking her questions about life without revealing anything about himself because he knew he had skeletons. This man lied to her about going to college and then later told her that he didn't even graduate high school, that he had two kids and was still married. And when she asked him why he lied, he told her he didn't lie. He just never told her. Same thing. And then when Zora was upset about this coming out, as she should have been, he turned it around on her by saying she was looking for an excuse. Baby, these are valid, very valid reasons. And you knew this. That's why you didn't tell her. Now, at this point, they had already moved too fast, but when this was revealed, this should have been a stopping point for Zora to either stop seeing him or take her feelings out of it and keep it as the F buddy thing. But no, she not only accepted this, but moved his ass in. And even before he accepted the keys, he was already telling her what he couldn't do. Your rent is steep and I don't know if I can help. And she brightened up his life by telling him that she'd cover the bills. Dude hit the jackpot. Mind you, Franklin was trying to start a business that he didn't even meet the minimum requirements for, and Zora was trying to launch her music career. This was not the right time to be accepting extra burdens and responsibility. And since Franklin was slanging D all around the apartment, since that's all he had to offer at this point, Zora got pregnant and he begged her to keep the baby and he promised to do things that he hadn't managed to do for the other two kids and wife that were already there. Red flag. So now Zora was expecting and paying all the bills yet and still he wanted her to continually feed into his ego. Every time she wanted to focus on her music or when attention needed to be on her, he couldn't handle it. It was like her dreams didn't matter as much as his or maybe he was intimidated because she was closer to her dreams than he was, but he had the perfect setup to make it happen. He didn't take advantage at all, or maybe he did, but not the way he should have. After they had the baby, I believe that's when reality set in for both of them. Zora realized that Reg was right and that it was going to be much harder to focus on her career as a mom. And Franklin discovered that he couldn't just work odd jobs to make ends meet or sling D to avoid fixing himself or their issues. Now, Franklin was on the right path with the union job, but his crazy ass lost the job. Self-sabotage at the worst possible time. But how ironic was it that after they broke up, Franklin got the divorce, got his GED, and was on track to becoming a contractor, and Zora was finally seeing her music career flourish. Almost like they should have never been together in the first place. I really hate they got in so deep and had a whole baby before they realized that it wasn't a good time and they needed to focus on themselves first. They could have avoided all of this, but some lessons must be learned the hard way. Anyway, that's it for this review. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. As for this next review, all I'm going to say is 2018, highly requested, and y'all know I don't care for this man's content but I'll do it for y'all. And me saying bitter black woman seeking revenge on her ex as a clue would probably mean nothing because that's the plot for about 99.5% of his films. But I digress. See you next time, you guys. Bye.